Hello and welcome to episode 2 in my GAU3 gameplay series. The match in this video is a King of the Hill gameplay on Sandbar and I'm partied up with Tony once more. This was actually the last match we played of the night in which the Mercy game you saw in episode 1 also took place. I chose this game for this video as it seems to highlight very well my playstyle on Gears 3 and is a dominating performance by our team, despite being outnumbered for much of the first round. Both teams start with two bots each, but the opposing team get two players much quicker than we do, so it's actually five on three at one point. So the subject of today's video is going to be of my Gears of War 3 playstyle. I will go into detail about how I approach the game and what my strengths and weaknesses are, and why I think it's an effective and enjoyable way to play when it comes to trying to win games. So as you know, I pretty much exclusively play King of the Hill, and while certain parts of my game change depending on if I'm playing TDM, Guardian or whatever, there is one aspect which always remains the same. That aspect is providing support for you. Primarily I'm a support player, and very often I'll get the equivalent of 3 or 4 straight kills in damage points alone. I'll come on to my specific King of the Hill style in a little while, but I want to touch on other game types first. Now my two most other played game types have been TDM and Guardian, although I rarely play even those these days. In TDM I tend to play a more passive support role than I would in King of the Hill, whereas in Guardian I'm more aggressive and will often go for the leader. I would say one of my main strengths has always been having something to focus on, which is probably why I love King of the Hill so much. As an example, in an opening rush I'm quite often able to get to a power weapon the quickest and read the gameplay well enough to secure it either by handling the situation with opponents also roughing, or noticing that they're delayed slightly, allowing me to pick it up straight away. This is why I'm generally more aggressive in Guardian, as I can read the game quite well, and have on many occasions taking out the leader whilst getting that first blood ribbon at the same time. TDM has become a lot more campy lately, with no objective, but in the past I've generally gone for power weapons, and used suppressing fire to support my team whilst they mop up the kills. As for other game types, I don't particularly like any of the others, although I have played execution competitively. Usually my role there is to hold down power weapons by either getting them myself or stopping opponents getting them, or provide support fire in initial rushes whilst the rest of my team aim to take over an area. So back onto King of the Hill, and in that game type I'm the ultimate objective player. The hill is my main priority on almost all occasions. The only time I'm not heading towards the hill or being in and around it is when there's a boom shot or frags on the map and they're out of the way. I would have to say that around 95% of my, ki my kills on Gears 3 come from either the Nasher, Lancer, boom shot or frag grenades. I only pick up another power weapon if the hill is on it or I have to run past it to get to the hill. As you can see from this gameplay in particular, I keep moving between the hill and boom shot. The hill is still my main priority, but I know how powerful the boom shot is, so once I've capped the hill and I'm within a reasonable distance of boom, I'll just head straight there. However, on most occasions, like when my teammates are looking after power weapons, they're too far away, or they aren't boom or frags, I'll be in and around wherever the hill is. Obviously this means I tend to get a lot of caps, and therefore a lot of my points come from capping the hill, in addition to the damage points I mentioned earlier. In games where I get MVP, I'm usually only 3rd or 4th when it comes to number of kills, but I get my points other ways. I'm pretty much to the last line of defence when it comes to defending the hill. I never leave to go and search for kills, I just wait for them to come to me, and I'll use a mixture of Lancer to delay people from reaching the hill, and Nasher to defend it when they get close. My mindset is that every point counts, so anything I can do to give us extra points is worth it. Obviously when it comes to pushing opponents off the hill it's more of a team based thing and in those situations I will switch between support fire and just getting amongst it with a Nasher depending on the situation. And that brings me nicely back round to my ability to read the game as I mentioned earlier. I feel like I'm very good at knowing when to push things, when to leave them and move on, when to go for a power weapon and when to just leave it, things like that. For me this is the crux of how I play. It's more for me about being smart and tactical than just running around slaying everything. For example, in the instance where there's maybe 3 or 4 opponents around the hill and my team are all dead, I'm more than happy to just keep getting hill breaks and run away, stalling their ability to accumulate points whilst I'm waiting for my team to respawn. Some might just try to take out those 3 or 4 enemies right there, 
but in most instances, and unless you're a pro player, that's just not going to work. Because even if you take out three of them, it only takes one guy left over to cap that hill and get a significant amount of points. So when it comes to the Nasher, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I would probably say one of my main weaknesses is my inability to handle more than, say, two opponents at once when it's a Nasher fight. I win more one-on-ones than I lose, and can get some decent doubles and triples every so often, but I can't do that consistently. I'm not going to have 50 plus kill games, and I'm fine with that. The guys you see who can do that have practiced to become that kind of player, but I prefer to play in a different way. I'm competent in most areas, and have my decent moments of course, but my main strength comes from knowing where to be and what best to do at the right time to help my team win more than anything else. And that's pretty much what it's all about for me, winning the game. I don't care about KD or win-loss ratios, I don't try to get clips, and I'm not aiming to be MVP in any game I play. All that matters to me in every match I play is winning right there and then. I see people quit before the end of games all the time, so they don't take a loss on their record. All play for KD with no care at all as to whether they win the game. I'll never understand that, to be honest. Nobody cares about KD or win-loss ratios, apart from the people who are trying to improve them. At the end of a game, I don't look at the stats of a player on the team I've just beaten, who left just before the end, see a 25 win-loss ratio and think, wow, that guy is awesome. Instead, I think, what a saddle. He's terrible at the game and likes to make himself believe he's actually good, because he's clearly not doing it for everyone else, as they've all just witnessed him leave and they all know that he absolutely sucks. So all I want to do is win, and if I don't, well, I'll just try to win the next one instead. However, and this is a big however, which is why I said it in such an emphatic voice, I don't try to win at all costs. I don't run around every game with Savage Cantus and a Retro Lancer or Hammer Burst. I'm not a scumbag like that. I like to play the game my way, using the characters I like and the weapons I enjoy. Despite being a child of Gears of War 3, insofar as I hardly played multiplayer on the other two games and a Dark King of the Hill Overseer execution, I still stick with the old Lancer Nasher loadout. It suits my style of play perfectly, and those are the weapons I enjoy using the most. Yes, I love to win, but I like to enjoy the game as well. I could get so many more kills using spongy characters with the retro, but to me that feels fake and I don't enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, running into a party of solely hammer burst or retro lancer using savage cantuses frustrates me, but the wins against those guys are much sweeter and the losses don't feel too bad, and sometimes even the challenge is quite refreshing. I don't lower myself to the level of Savage Cantus and any other little thing that would give me an advantage possible, every advantage possible, sorry, because I want to play and win games my way, the way I find most enjoyable, and not be burdened with using a specific gun or character because it gives me an advantage. I feel like I've struck a nice balance between winning and enjoyment. So that's pretty much it, guys. The second round of this match was an even more dominant performance and we ended up shutting out the opposing team as it seemed like they didn't know how to play King of the Hill at all. There was even one hill where I got all the points on my own, and I'll show that little section here. As you can see, I leave the guy I'm fighting at Snipe as he is retreated, poses little threat, and my focus is on the hill. Once I get there, I cap all on my own, and I then proceed to just sit there waiting for someone to come along. They don't. In the end, I only have to defend it from one person, and a huge update is the only reason I die there but I'm not really bothered as I've secured all the points off that hill by then anyway. And there lies the whole point of the way I play. I was the only person on either team to come to the hill at a reasonable time, and what I mean by that is not near the end once it's already been capped for 40 plus points. I was the only one who made it my priority, and even over killing another guy. It was the difference between winning the game on the next hill with an insurmountable lead, and potentially being faced with a comeback, 55 points to 0 is very different to 112 to 0 in terms of the belief of the opponents to make a game out of it, and that's likely why they didn't even push very hard for the final hill, instead choosing to go for kills, and why we were able to get the shutout. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and listening to me ramble on about how I play. I feel like sometimes players like me don't get that much coverage, because we tend to be in the background just making sure things go right. 
but remember that behind every great slayer you see, there's usually a great support player putting damage points into his opponents too. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in episode 3, where, I, where I'll explain how I develop my playstyle, and how I improved on gears in general. Feel free to subscribe so you don't miss that, or click the annotation in the top right, and I'll see you then.